Greetings. One of the most important subjects in the world, and probably the most important relative to how few people are contributing knowledge to this subject or are even studying this subject, is the accelerating rate of change. And within the accelerating rate of change, the subset that has even fewer people writing about it or studying it is the accelerating rate of economic progress. And frankly, I'm one of the two or three only contributors to that field of knowledge in the last 15 years. And I don't want that to be the case because if more people were studying the accelerating rate of change and the implications of that for economics and finance, then we would get a lot more good ideas and uplift the world to a better place. So it's not a great thing that only two or three people are truly trying to tell the world about the accelerating rate of progress and the accelerating rate of economic growth. But the purpose of this video is to try and get more people to think about the various evidence of the accelerating rate of change. Now, I had a vague perception of this all the way from 1980 when Carl Sagan in his Cosmos documentary series displayed the cosmic calendar. And after that, my studies of paleontology and so forth also made the accelerating rate of change very, very evident. And that is something you can look at in my semantic learning tree about paleontology in this tile over here. But in terms of my own writings about this, I wrote a book back in 2002, which was about the accelerating rate of change, but it never got published. And in those days, there was no YouTube or anything like that. Even blogging was a very new thing at that time. So I divided that book up into my blog, The Futurist. And in that blog, there was an article written way back in 2006. Way back in 2006, I wrote an article about how a person can tell if they're acceleration aware. And this is in the description box below, of course. And I speak about how government budgeting tends to project things out under a linear rate of extrapolation rather than an exponential one and the fallacy of that type of thinking and then some content around the various types of technologies that are accelerating. You can see this text in bold font over here. The rate of change in many aspects of human society and even some aspects of all life on Earth moves on an exponential trend, not a simple linear one. Now, if you look at my cloud categories over on The Futurist, you'll see accelerating change as the biggest font item in the category cloud. That means I have the most articles about the accelerating rate of change, and I would urge anyone who wants to look at the older articles about that to click on that link, and you can see all the articles about that and read those if you would like. Many of these articles are also going to be converted into YouTube videos on this channel. There's a lot of articles. This was 15 years of blogging in just one of the categories in the Futurist, but probably the biggest one as per the category cloud. So this is where you can start to learn about the accelerating rate of change, how it affects everything from biological evolution, technological progress, and economic progress, all three of which are related, as I often point out. And this takes us to the most famous contributor to the field of the accelerating rate of change. He does have a book coming up in 2022 but he has not written much after 2008 other than this upcoming book. That's Ray Kurzweil. And he produced this chart in one of his books, The Singularity is Near, which I have reviews for on this channel, along with a number of his other books. This is one of the most comprehensive and indisputable pieces of evidence of the accelerating rate of change because he is taking, in the horizontal axis, time before present, years before present, so this is most recent, and going leftwards is further back in time. And then the time between each next significant event. So this is rising. And then he's taken these assessments of important events across all sorts of sources. Astronomers, historians, encyclopedias, philosophers, and so forth. And without them influencing each other, all these various sources can put their assessment of what the most significant historical events were on a chart. And what is remarkable is how all of them converge around an indisputable trend of accelerating rate of change. Bigger and bigger events are happening closer and closer together. And this is evident across evolution, paleontology, economics, science, technology, and everything. All these 15 or so different sources corroborate evidence of an accelerating rate of change. Now, this chart is from 2005, and it definitely needs to be updated, especially if we're getting close to the point of very rapid change in this curve. The 2021 or 2022 version of this chart will look significantly different, even though this chart goes back 10 billion years. Since 2005, there have been a number of important historical events, and the rate of economic growth being exponential means a lot of economic growth has, in fact, happened after 2005, 
In fact, half of all economic growth that has ever happened has happened after the year 2000, as I described in this video over here. So this chart is itself the most comprehensive and indisputable piece of the accelerating rate of change. But now, as far as other sources for you to look at, I showed you my blog, but there's also a playlist on this YouTube channel. It's over here in my own channel. If you look at playlists, you can see accelerating rate of change. And I click on that and you can see this long playlist over here of about 24 plus videos. And I'm gonna continue to add to that. So this is another source where you can learn about the accelerating rate of change. Now, when we get to the accelerating rate of change as a subject, obviously we talk about the technological singularity. And for that, I refer you to my videos that you can see over here in this playlist, but I have a two-part video about timing the technological singularity, which you can see over here as part one, and part two is what you can click on after you see part one from that point. But there's other ones as well. This economic growth progress one that I talked about, that is crucially important, so I'm gonna click on it. And here you can see me talking about the accelerating rate of economic growth. Half of all economic progress has happened after the year 2000. And as we go into the future, this midpoint also moves forward. There will be a time in the not too distant future where we can say half of all economic progress has happened after 2021. Most of you will still be rather young by that point because that could be only 14 or 15 years away depending how you measure economic progress. So this is very essential viewing for anyone interested in the field of accelerating studies. Accelerating studies is not a subject taught at the university level other than in my class at Stanford, which is something I teach only sporadically over there. And it's not one of those classes in a degree granting program. I'm just a visiting lecturer slash instructor type of person there. But this is some solid material to get started on. And this channel points to many other materials, including reviews of Ray Kurzweil's books. But in addition to that, how the accelerating rate of change is manifest in both technology and economic progress, because technological progress and economic progress are effectively one and the same. You can't have one without the other, and they are both mutually reinforcing and therefore mutually accelerating. And this leads to the atom thesis. That is also an important theme of this channel, because the premise of the monetization of technological deflation is that since technology is accelerating, deflation is accelerating, that means I have a robust algorithm to predict how much quantitative easing can be done without inflation and my numbers continue to be correct and my predictions continue to be correct while other people still think, oh, this must cause inflation because I memorized that from a book written in the 1950s or something. No, the accelerating rate of change means we can be much bolder in terms of the amount of quantitative easing that can be done because borrowing against the future or leveraging the anticipated technological deflation of the future is much less risky under an accelerating rate of change. So I'm gonna have other videos about that. I don't want this video to be too long, but I really want more people to become aware of the accelerating rate of change. And that's one of the primary purposes of this channel and all of my writing activities and video production activities going back to 2006. So we're almost 16 years into this. And as I mentioned earlier, I wrote a book way back in 2002, which I did not get published, but I still have the printout of it. I'll show it in some video over here. It is amazing that we can get as far as 2021 with so few people even being curious about the accelerating rate of change. But at least for those of you who are curious, I do want to make it seem like there is at least some material for you to look at and some that can spark new ideas and new thoughts of your own and perhaps even entice you to become a contributor to this field or do some research on your own and add to this body of knowledge. Now, if you find this type of subject to be interesting and you believe that these types of videos can increase your understanding of the world we live in, then I encourage you to hit the subscribe button and subscribe to this channel. And thank you very much for watching.